everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, Place of Binding of Isaac Andrew with Plus Word. We you know we've we've fallen off the horse, and now we're back on the horse, and now we gotta stay on the horse. Um, with the run with some pretty good stats, NR7F OA seven Z. That's right. We're calling it Z now. I'm done. I'm done pretending it's Z, okay? I've Americanized my accent for too long. It's time. I did have, uh, the other day, I was part of a very important business call where details remain under wraps the tightest NDA I've ever signed in my entire life. I'll leave it up to you whether you determine uh, if this is real or fake. I'll tell you, it's fake. Okay, sorry, I can't keep a secret. Um, and I did have somebody in the call ask, Hey, I hope this isn't, a, isn't inappropriate. And it, it wasn't inappropriate at all. They said, what's your accent? And I legitimately... Hold on, we gotta play here. No, I just needed one of you to be a freaking troll bomb, dude. Um, legitimately, I said it's Canadian accent mixed with like Americanized pronunciations I learned on Xbox Live. For you, when you hear me say plague or bagel or boro um, or bora even. You, you laugh, you go, ha ha, that's the first time I've ever heard of it. Excuse me, why'd you say it like that? For me, it's a lifetime of cyber abuse. Anytime I talked in VoIP. I hate that we have to leave here, but... You know, I, I, we, we should have used uh, the Ace of Clubs to turn that one lone key that we got into a bomb, which would have given us access to the Tinted Rock. But the, the run is good enough that it's not hopefully going to have too much of a knock-on effect, but it is a mistake. Um, for me, it's uh, a lifetime, starting with, you know, Halo 2, VoIP lobbies... Where my pronunciation was mocked as a mere teenager. So I've, I've sanded the edges off of my Canadian accent. Hello, everybody. I'm from an American state that is not New York, nor in the American South, nor Minnesota. How are you today? No longer. We're going full moose factory, bud. We're gonna put more sauce on this than a pizza pizza calzone. Which isn't that hard, cause pizza pizza... And I know you're gonna say, you mean Little Caesars? No! No, not Little Caesars. Pizza pizza. It's a Canadian chain, you wouldn't understand. So I did ruin my deal with the devil chance getting too close to one of those bombs. And then walking into the fire right afterwards. It's not a fantastic start. Um, but I will also say that our, our items have actually turned out really nice for, for where we're at. So, uh, in spite of the fact that this has been a, a very wonky, sort of, like, unfocused start, I actually think we're much better than completely fine. I know where I'm going with this one. Um, anyway, that's the bit. The end. That's, that's the end of the bit. Grab this bomb, which I would have loved to have had on the last floor, but check this out. Check this out. One of those. And then... It's probably a lot better. Um, we will peer into the shop. Ooh. And, uh... You know, I think this is a justifiable use of a single bomb. And I hate to, you know, hurt the donation machine like that, but it gives us enough money to... Ensure that some positive stuff could be in our future. And I, I'm really not sweating this one just yet. Um, don't walk into the enemies, though. We'll still get a deal with the devil. It's just going to have to wait a floor. Gemini is not huge. And you know what I learned? Because uh, finally the video of, of losing the last version of the streak is out. You know, we got a relatively small backlog right now. By, by me standards. Um, I should really be going to more of these rooms that appear to have nothing but may possess just enough to tip us into the positives, you know? Okay, so it must be here. Oh, you love it. You love to see it. Especially with Bloody Penny. 
Okay, I... I'm just gonna be fully transparent with you. It's early in the morning, by my standards. I, I do offer that up as an excuse for uh, walking into that thing when I shouldn't have walked into it. I would have expected one of the bloody one of the bloody pennies to pay out, but obviously that has not been the case hither to this moment. Um, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. Grab all this, because actually a speed upgrade would be of the utmost importance right now. There we go. It's not broken. Anyway, uh, we would we would probably take IV bag. As well, to be honest with you. Good lord, this is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. Um, today, today is uh, Sunday. Yesterday was uh, Saturday. What did I do on Saturday? It was kind of a... Uh, I mean, it was a busy day. Operationally. Oh, I didn't mean to pick that up, actually. Which is not a good sign with how... I'm like, things are a little unfocused right now. Um, but... No, it was a it was a relatively like busy-ish uh, day off. Some of the busyness was was pseudo work related. Some of the busyness was uh, you know recreational, but it was it was a good <sighs> help me. It was a good time nonetheless. I watched a couple of episodes of that new season of Dark. Found myself uh, delightfully confused all over again. Who's this? Who's that? What's this name? Have we met this person? I can't even say anything else, because, you know, if you're waiting on it, you'll, you'll, you'll be spoiled a little bit, but certainly remains as uh, labyrinthine and thought-provoking as, uh, as previous. Okay, we're, we're coming close to the end of the thread on this floor. Also watched uh, a little bit of... The horror movie. Well, actually, let me... Because I, I didn't watch one horror movie. I watched half of two horror movies. Why didn't you watch uh, just one full movie all the way through? Well, sometimes life's not like that. You know, chill out what you're yelling for. Lay back. It's all been done before. See, Avril never lost her Canadian accent. That's why she's a Canadian hero. I watched... I would say two-thirds... The latter two-thirds of The Shining sequel, Doctor Sleep. And I've got to be honest, I expected that movie to be trash. And I was actually very, very pleasantly surprised. I think, you know, thanks for the money and, and, the, and the whatevers, but I'm out of here. Um, I, was, I was very, very surprised. I found myself being like, I think this movie is actually, it's weird for sure. I mean, The Shining is weird too, um, but it's weird in kind of a, a cool way that I didn't uh, I didn't see coming. And then I watched uh, about half of a January horror movie, which should tell you all you need to know, called The Prodigy, that I thought was uh, pretty much garbage. <laughs> pretty much garbage. Uh, would I say it is not worth your time? No, I would not go that far because we now live in. Um, in a world where it's been like, I don't know, three months since the last major uh, motion picture hit theaters. And the, the movie channels, if, if you got access to them, are starting to chunk out like the last movies to have hit theaters pre-quarantine. If you still want to see uh, new-ish movies, of course, uh, you don't need to, you know say the obvious, which is there's basically an infinite supply of movies that, you know, came out not in 2020 or 2019, but even in other years, such as 1976 or 1953, you know? There's all sorts of years with movies that you could go check out if you're, you know, you don't want to see new stuff, but if you want to see contemporary stuff for whatever reason, then, you know, you kind of, we're in this position right now where beggars can't really be choosers. <laughs> you're kind of just, uh... You're, you, I wouldn't say you're scraping the bottom of the barrel, but, you know, you're you're not spoiled for choice anymore, let's put it that way. I also like, I don't know if you've been following the Christopher Nolan film, Tenet. Um, I, I like Christopher Nolan a lot, by the way. I've, I've, I understand there is a, a Nolan backlash because he is seen as, well, two different things. One being like, you know, really kind of uh, rigid about how he wants his movies to be viewed, but then also putting Inception into, into Fortnite, which is hilarious to me. Um, and then secondarily, because he's kind of like, 
maybe I wouldn't say overrated necessarily, but you know, for for people people in my demographic, you know, early twenty, let, let's say like twenty to forty year old. Uh, I'm gonna be really rude when I say this, but I'm I'm describing myself. Twenty to forty year old pseudo intellectuals. Not even like I'm not saying that if you're in that demo you're not smart. I just merely mean you like you like good movies, but sometimes you watch a movie that's a little too arty and you go, I don't really get it. You're like Interstellar, masterpiece, except for the ending. High life, mm, that's a little bit too much for me. That's that's me. That's me in a nutshell. Don't get mad, get glad, dude. But uh, I, I like Christopher Nolan a lot, so don't take this as uh, an insult. Like, I guess if you're in my demo, here's here's the description. You like great superhero movies. You don't want to watch a trash superhero movie, but if a superhero movie ha is, like, filmed like a Scorsese film, you're like, this may be the greatest thing of all time. It's got pathos and superpowers. It's got it all. By the way, this is where this run completely comes together. Apparently, uh, in spite of the fact that it, I probably don't deserve it to because of some mistakes. But hey, that's that's Isaac, baby. Um, so I, I like Christopher Nolan a lot, but I, I did think it was funny that in the middle of quarantine, they released a trailer for Tenet and was like, coming to theaters. And it's like a big moment, like, oh my god. It's a defiant moment we can all rally behind. So they're like, it's coming out in July. Or it's coming, originally I think it was coming out in June. And then, uh, you know, June uh, is here, and is still not a great time to go to the movies, so they moved it to July, and then July's only a month away, and you can kind of look at the graphs and be like, I don't know about that one, brother. And then the, now they've just pushed it another month to August. I think it's the first time in, in my lifetime a movie has been on call. It's got Christopher Nolan's got his pager strapped to his belt, just waiting for Regal Cinemas to call him and be like, Hey, Christopher, we need you. It's time to kickstart the, the box office again. I mean, all the, I don't think there's any shame in it, you know? The the, the movie preferences... I, was, I mean, I don't think there's any shame in movie preferences to begin with, necessarily. Um, but, uh, hold on, I'm trying to think about... No, we don't need anything else. I think we're good to go. Yeah, get me out of here. Uh, but Dogtooth? No Dogtooth? Alright. I I think that, you know, when I was uh, younger, I thought that the full evolution of film snob, uh, and, and this may be the case, admittedly, but is like, uh, you know, eventually... You start and you like kids' movies, then as a teenager you're like, this movie has uh, kung fu in it, and you're like, that's amazing. And then like as an adult, you're like, I watch movies with subtitles, and then when you become 70 years old, you're like, oh baby. That, that light spy thriller with Helen Mirren and Ian McKellen, that's my jam. I'm here to tell you, that movie was, was built for people that are over the age of 65 years old. I got nothing against Ian McKellen, or Helen Mirren for that matter. But that is a movie that was built for the the over 60 crowd, which is fine, you know? A lot of the movies I watch are specifically built for my demographic for the most part. Um, but I really think, like, I've, I've come to terms with the fact that, like, and I, I've said this before, but this is a big moment of realization for me. I've really, if I'm being honest with myself, if you told me an understated drama was a 9 out of 10. I would believe you, and then given the choice, I would watch a 5 or 4 out of 10 movie with science fiction elements over top of it. Sincerely. I, I offer no apology or understanding. I mean, I understand that it, it's probably annoying. But really, like, there's... I, I can fairly evaluate a science fiction film. Like, I can watch Matt LeBlanc's Lost in Space. Yeah, Joey Tribbiani. Um, what, what a cast. Joey Tribbiani and Gary Oldman, Lost in Space. By the way, anybody my age here watch Lost in Space and find themselves absolutely traumatized by the... Uh, 
by the doctor is it dr smith by what dr smith transformed into it gave me nightmares for like weeks after seeing it and i didn't even see it in theaters i saw it on cable dude there were commercials between <laughs> between the scares um but uh i forget what i was talking about oh um, so I, I can watch a movie like that and be like, that's like a 2 out of 10. However, there's like, a, internally, there's like a soft buff that science fiction movies get for me. Like, a, a, a 5 out of 10 sci-fi film is a 5 out of 10. However, is also like... Is a 5 out of 10 on Letterboxd. But in terms of my own enjoyment of having watched it, it was like a seven. It's like it gets a it gets a twenty percent buff. And don't get me wrong, I, I'm not like the a guy who watches like quote unquote serious movies and is like boring. When are they gonna shoot each other? I watched uh, Bad Education, starring uh, Hugh Jackman, Allison Janney, and uh, Ray Romano, and I thought that was. Uh, I thought that was a fantastic film as well, and that's, uh, I wouldn't call it dry, it's actually pretty lively, but it's, the story is about, you know, money laundering in a Long Island school district. But I thought that was, uh, was very well done as well. Hold on, there was, there was a, an a woo in here. Yeah, the, the bottom side here makes a lot more sense. You know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a bad boy, let's be bad. And open up a secret portal there. But I, I think I've come to terms with the fact that that I wouldn't say my tastes are no longer going to evolve. What I would say is that for where I'm at right now, the rate of change of my tastes is almost zero. <laughs> but you know, when when you're uh, younger. Your tastes change like crazy, you know? Like the movies that a, a 10 year old likes, they probably like some of the same movies when they're 14. And then they like some of the same movies when they're 18, but it's like, you know, if you show Pulp Fiction to a 10 year old, they're gonna be like, what? If you show Pulp Fiction to a 14 year old, they're gonna be like, hey, it's pretty good. If you show, it's, it's not as good as Transformers, but it's pretty good. Help. That hurt, that hurt, that hurt. Okay, well, just one health downgrade then. Um, it, it's actually kind of a spotty run now. I'm a, I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed in myself for just taking the pills out of a sense of inertia. Let's, let's cut that out. You show it to an 18 year old, they're gonna be like, this is the greatest movie ever made. Is that Nick Fury? <laughs> but now, like, uh... Well, I mean, like, back then, in a decade, I went from, like, my favorite movie of all time being Milo and Otis to my favorite movie of all time being, like, I don't know, maybe Federico Fellini's Eight and a Half. Run. Um, now, it, the, the tastes don't change that much, but you have the benefit of a much larger time scale. So, you know, if my tastes get, like, 1% more octogenarian every single year I'll be at like a hundred and thirty percent octogenarian at this point by the time I hit 80 I know the math doesn't seem like it adds up but let's assume that I started with like 25 percent octogenarian but anyway I actually believe it or not I think it's time to put a little sauce on the Isaac focus here I appreciate we had we had some good come on come on some good early banter um, but I wouldn't say the run is, is really in danger at all, but it certainly still needs a little bit of extra, extra something. Namely, a defensive item capable of giving us some HP would go a long, long way. We're using, and, and I, I don't want to overcommit to Sack Dagger. I hate to say it, but like, as much as I love sack dagger i feel like our range is kind of holding us well it doesn't really make any sense because you'd be like why let, let me rephrase because i think i i got twisted up there as much as i love sack dagger based on our hp i would rather be using our tears even though we could really use some damage ups on them 
Um, but my my like shot speed and and range just make the tears feel kind of not that great. I don't know if that's a legitimate feeling. We won't be taking those. Um, I don't know if that's a legitimate feeling or if that's uh, you know a little just a little me being misled by some frivolous stats, but. We'll, we'll figure it out. The good news is I really think we're like a floor away. One extremely good... Uh, okay, so that's not our secret room. One extremely good uh, DPS item or defensive item from the deal with the devil is really like... It, it would go a long way. And then not throwing your own HP away would also be be pretty helpful. So there you go. There's There's a few seconds of Isaac focus. You know, it probably won't matter, um, but, but let's buy the Steam Sale in here. Maybe it'll matter. I think you can't say no to Sad Onion. Getting yourself up to a, a reasonable rate of fire. Oh, this is pretty good. That's more useful. That's uh, It's not going to be there, dude. It's going to be here. What was am I losing it? Confirmed losing it. All right. All right, you know, it's no big deal. It's not like I I disappointed all the Hulkamaniacs out there that love uh Dogtooth by going into a secret room that has two buttons in it. And if you press the buttons, you fight enemies, and if you fight enemies, you don't get anything out of it because they were not real enemies. They were created by the pressing of the button in the first place. It's not it's not it's along those lines or anything. It's not nothing unusual. Also, we should be using blue candle more. I bought it, and I mean I bought it because it's great. It's not like I, I feel like I got buyer's remorse. I, I just need to press the space bar more often. That was good. This is good. Although, you know what? It's not actually that good at all. Now that I realize we're already at the tier cap and there goes the bone heart. So, it was uh, it was fun while it lasted. You're okay. You're okay. You're, you're still okay. <laughs> well, honestly, it's a bit of a weird choice. But if we're going to use... Hold on. Let me, let me see if, I, if I've got an important message here. Hmm. It, it, it can wait moments. But uh, I'm thinking if we're not using... No, I, it's, it, it can't be the right call. It can't be the right call. And I think I'm out of here for now. Um, I thought maybe if we're not using Blue Candle, Krampus's head would be better specifically for boss rooms and, you know... It might seem like boss rooms are a niche case, but by the time, you know, you're on the chest, every room almost is a boss room. Uh, but I, I think that really I just need to own up and use Blue Candle a little bit more frequently. And stop being mad at Dogtooth when it doesn't work immediately. You know, just because the secret room's trash, you know, you, you gotta... You know, Isaac, it's a law of large numbers thing. It's You're dealing with percentages and... You know, proportions and, you know, biased item pools and stuff like that. You, you gotta you gotta get a high sample size. You don't want N equals 1. You know, we're looking for... It's not gonna be like N equals 10,000, but, you know, maybe like N equals 30. You know, it's got the same level of statistical significance as, like, you sampling your high school. You ever have to do that? In my, uh, my 11th grade psychology class, I had to, uh, dis well, everybody did. It wasn't just me. Um, but I had to devise, like, some kind of survey. I don't even remember what it was. And then we had to go around to, like, other classrooms. And be like, hey, can we have the kids take the survey? And I always felt like, um... Like I was, oh, a little anxious, right? Like, I don't want to go to these teachers in the middle of their lessons and be like, Hey, can I interrupt you? Because I, like, what if they're in the middle of something important? And then, they were always super happy to do it. I realized later, uh, that why wouldn't you? <laughs> 
When I was a teacher myself, if I was in the middle of teaching and uh, somebody came into the class and was like, hey, can I give you a good reason to have 10 to 15 minutes of complete silence? I would have been like, no. <laughs> yes! Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a... Okay, that's very nice. I'm not going to do the special rooms. Because we've already recognized, at least at this point, the shop doesn't have a reroll machine. If the shop had a reroll machine that we could farm for spirit hearts, I'd be all over it. However, I think we've reached probably most of the end of the yield on this floor. We will definitely take both of these. We got to be a little careful. But these are exactly the items I was looking for. Remember that? These aren't the droids you're looking for. <laughs> Star Trek. Captain Jean Luc Picard, you cheeky son of a gun using the Klingon mind tricks. To escape the Jedi Empire. I know we've talked about this on the NLSS. I, I mean, I recently, like, mere moments ago, told you um, that I, I love science fiction films, in spite of them sometimes being bad. Um, or, I, I don't know, I wouldn't say they're always, or, or, or more often bad than any other genre. But, uh, even, even still, does it ever surprise you that there's such a huge Star Wars fandom? Like, when I was a, a kid, it made a lot of sense to me. It's a trilogy of relatively critically acclaimed and incredibly influential films from the 1970s. You know? It was 20 years uh, before my time, more or less. But it made sense that it was kind of like this revered thing. And then the prequels came out. And, uh, you know, I, I'll just tell you, like, the discourse was weird. Even as an 11-year-old, you know, you pick up on it. When The Phantom Menace came out, people were like, it's the greatest Star Wars film ever made. It's better than The Empire Strikes Back. And then, like, when it came out on home video, people were like, actually, it kind of stinks. Uh, Attack of the Clones was somewhat liked, but not very. By somewhat, I mean, like, you know, the majority of people were kind of like, eh, it's okay. And then Revenge of the Sith, everybody seemed to be like, all right, this one's pretty good. But it does have that... Oh, I should have taken the... Oh, I used the world card already. Um, it does have that one moment where, you know, Darth Vader goes, No! But uh, apart from that, definitely the most well-liked of the original three. Um, but And even still, it made sense that there was kind of like a, a huge Star Wars fandom in the sense that like... Sorry, I just wanted to see what was in there. In the sense that like, you know... The, the, the prequels, even if I don't think... And I, I watched them all again in, like, 2015. I stand by my by my assessment. I mean, I really... I, you're gonna make me get into it. I think the prequels have gone from properly rated to, to overrated as the generation of people who were children when they saw them have, have grown into adults. Uh, and that's fine. You know, I don't think there's anything... Uh, I think it's a natural course of things. But I really think... Episode 3 is pretty good. I like it. I, I enjoy watching it both, you know, for pulpy irony and also not for, you know, just for sincere, genuine uh, entertainment. Attack of the Clones is pretty boring, but I think it's probably four to five times as good as uh, The Phantom Menace, which I honestly cannot fathom that there are people out there that... Are, are adults who have seen the movie as adults and are like, no, nah, this is really good. And we can disagree on that, you know? I'm not saying, like, you know, oh, go back to movie-watching school. You know, everybody's got their own uh, opinion. But between, like, you know, Jar Jar Binks and, you know, the slapstick, like, the, the overt slapstick nature of things and, you know, everything being underpinned by a child actor uh, who, you know, I don't, I don't want to insult a nine-year-old's acting abilities, but, you know, all try spinning, that's a good trick. And literally, like, 
the all the apologia always comes back to like yeah but duel of the fates and the pod racing okay duel of the fates is a great piece and the the actual fight itself is good it, it's choreographed well in my opinion i'm not an expert on this stuff but i you know and i think it's like a shocking moment when qui-gon you're kind of like waiting for it to happen but dreading it you know even though qui-gon jinn has been basically like relatively uncharacterized throughout the whole movie you're like i don't want liam neeson to die um but i'm gonna stop you right there the pod i really think the pod racing kind of sucks i had episode one pod racer on the n64 i think it's a great game for the time at least um and maybe, I don't know, I haven't played it in two decades, so it's been a while. But um, but the the actual pod racing scene, I mean, I just, if you haven't seen episode one in a long time, there is a scene where Jar Jar Binks gets his tongue stuck in the pod racing, like, electricity, which just for me... I'm just like, this isn't what I'm watching for. I get that it's a movie for kids, and you might be like, NL is a movie for kids. I know, I mean, I saw it when I was 11. <laughs> In theaters. Maybe even 10, now that I think about it. But, uh, I still kind of got it, because at least... Like, for, for all the things that I think, from a movie standpoint, the prequels don't do very well, I think they actually do, like, a pretty good job of, uh, of building, like, a, a weird and coherent world, even though I think the dialogue is, is truly horrible. The actual kind of, like, uh, world building in the movies is kind of interesting. However... Um, I'm still like, man, like the sequel trilogy is kind of, I'm trying to think of a good metaphor here. I feel like the original Star Wars is kind of like a, a very well-liked chain restaurant. You know, it's like Five Guys, Burgers and Fries. People are like, this is really good. Is it my favorite thing ever? Maybe. But, like, it's... We universally agree that it's pretty solid. And then the prequel trilogy is, like, a foreign food that you've never experienced before. And when you're eating it, you're like, I don't really know about this. I can't really determine if I like it, but, you know... Obviously, people have been eating it for forever, so there must be something good about it. Then the sequel trilogy is just like a worse version of Five Guys. It's like a it's like a franchised Five Guys where they don't use peanut oil anymore and instead they just use like uh you know motor oil. I was thinking of like what the joke would be there. Um I actually like I thought and we we can fight if you want. I thought that um The Force Awakens was pretty good. And then I thought that The Last Jedi was very good. Which I understand is the hotly contested issue. Um, and then, really, with all the discourse surrounding The Last Jedi and then the firing of uh, Ryan Johnson and the reintroduction of J.J. Abrams, uh, I kind of just went, all right, I get it. You're, you're making a statement that, that the franchise, you know, the, the things that I kind of liked about the... We have three Steam sales? The things I kind of liked about the new one, you're not, you know, that's, don't worry everybody, that's not happening ever again. So I, I never watched the, the newest one. Rise of the, the Thigh Shaver, or whatever it's called. Um, and again, that's, that's fine, I'm not like sore about it at all. If anything, I was like, oh, I just saved two and a half hours. But I really, I, I, I wish, and you, you could spin this either way. I would have a lot more respect for the sequel trilogy if they had either stuck with their guns or stuck to their guns and let Ryan Johnson finish it out to see what, you know what was going to happen there or if uh, and if it sucked it sucked you know or just let JJ Abrams I, I don't know I say let as if it was like Disney's decision I don't know maybe JJ Abrams was like I don't want to do the second one cuz that's I'm going to have to start answering things then I'm a mystery builder. <laughs> Let somebody else deal with the consequences. 
Um, I, I would have, I think, had a lot more respect for it if they had either been like, hey, this is the J.J. Abrams trilogy where um, the first one's gonna get you, like, all excited. You're gonna be like, I recognize that stuff. And then, like, we're gonna be like, ooh, who's this guy? What a, what a mysterious Sith we have. And then in the third one, they're like, I don't really know. It's just over. Um, and then, Or if they had gone for the full, you know, let Ryan Johnson finish it out and at least maybe the... The, the trilogy would feel somewhat coherent, even if it did rub some people the wrong way, but... I'm just kinda... I'm, I'm, I'm surprised, and, and if anything, I'm, I'm impressed with the, the enduring nature of the Star Wars uh, fan base. It, this is not dunking on Star Wars at all, it's really like... You know, I, I, I kinda see it, it like... The, the, more, the more suffering and controversy that happens in the Star Wars fandom... And, and yet it weathers the storm, the more I'm like, man, this is like genuine passion. I thought it was just like, I like the movies. But it's actually like, no, I kind of hate the movies, but I love the idea of what they could be. I don't know, man. I guess, and to be fair, I'm kind of completely ignoring the fact that, you know, like, over... 30 or 40 years, they actually had, like, a really well-respected, uh... Extended universe with, like, novelizations that were, that were really well-liked, and, you know, the Thrawn trilogy, and then, you know, a uh, Couple of decades of really well-respected Star Wars video games that came out that, you know, kind of strengthened not only the, uh, uh, you know, attachment to the brand, but also, like, expanded that story a little bit. You get the idea. So I guess it's not fair to say that, you know, it's a franchise that exists uh, solely because of the films. Anyway, I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers. The most feather ruffling thing I said was that I like the Last Jedi, and I will say I've been I've been defending the Last Jedi for uh, I don't know. Well, not really. Like I'm not putting on my armor every morning and going ah time to go to Twitter, but you know when when people ask, I'm like yeah I like it. For like over two years now, I haven't seen it since I saw it in theaters. It's possible that it, you know, won't hold up on a second viewing. Um, but in which case, why, why ruin uh, good memories? <laughs> For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. It was a bit of a, a poorly played win, but we got there nonetheless. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you next time. See ya!